I'm Karen Larson. And I'm Kathy Undum. And we're here to help you uh, paint up a doll of horses that you guys are going to put, put together. So this is going to be your lesson on how to paint the strokes. So we're going to start by showing you some of the um, doll of horses first. And then we will show you how they um, got those fancy strokes to make it look um, as fancy as these. Do you want to start with those strokes? Okay. So we're going to talk first about dolla mauling, and that is what uh, why we're this kind of painting is on these horses, and and we also have roosters and little pigs, and that all come from Sweden. And a special place in Sweden uh, is called Nusnes, and it's close to Mora, Sweden. So that's special for us. That's why we like to. That's why dolla horses are here in in Mora, Minnesota. Yep, we are sister city. Sister city. So as we can say here, dolla. And that's a province over in Sweden. Dalarna is called the province, and that's just kind of like our state to Minnesota and that. So Dala is a special, that's why the name is on there. And mauling is the painting. It's a flower painting, a floral plate painting. And as you can tell by the, the horses that have, they have flowers on them, they have a lot of little lines, look like nature and that. It's all, all about nature. Swedish people love nature and that and so they painted on their horses and that and so uh, all the horses have some kind of special uh, um, especially with the flowers and the little squiggly lines and that all represent um, flowers and then in nature and that so uh, that's kind of why we're the different strokes are the what we're going to be showing you and that so and they have very true to the nature colors like they have the blue for the water and um, the yellow for the sunshine, but they and the green for the leaves. But they usually don't mix their colors. They usually stay with the true colors. It's a good point because those are all the primary colors, which are very important. And okay, good. So okay, so we're gonna try to show you where we're gonna practice first, though, on our sheets of paper. So we have paper to start out with, so you can practice the strokes and that and um, so we're going to do and I want to first kind of, oh, if you can take that out. <laughs> first of all I want to talk special about the brushes and that because the brushes are very important and that we don't wreck the brushes especially the little br bristles that we have in that so when I talk about um, how the strokes are we have to always think about how the strokes are and that but you're always kind of going with the flow of the brush this way towards you never push the brush ahead of you and that because that breaks these little bristles off and that and we don't want to do that so um, and also when you're washing out your brushes and you should always wash your brushes between each um, color that you do in that and then a little piece of Kleenex we usually have we like to wipe off the colors Lacey and Carter, please go to your bathroom. So you wash out your brushes, especially really good and that between each color and then use your uh, Kleenex to kind of wipe out that excess water. We don't want a lot of water on your brush either in that. So when you have a color, you kind of dip it, you kind of dip it in the, in the paint just lightly. You don't have to push it down in there because we don't. This side you can see. Okay, so we're just kind of dipping it into the paint kind of away from you again you're not pushing down on the br on the bristles because we don't want to wreck the brush bristles and that so just kind of get the enough paint on there and that and so what we're just I'm just going to show you now you're kind of just drawing the drawing the paint towards you or the brush towards you um, again never push that way that's very very important or if you have to go this way just kind of go go with the flow of that way but never back way backwards that way so then I wash out my brush, use my Kleenex, and that to wash out the excess water and that. So that's a good thing to start with. Okay. Okay, then you can practice some of your straight strokes. And then after you've done some practicing, then they'll turn our video back on and then we'll show you the curved strokes. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the different strokes. And the first stroke that we want you to practice on is called this curve stroke. And it's more like a rainbow. Kind of looks like a rainbow and you're gonna just do one at a time. And so Karen's gonna show you how to pull your um, paintbrush so that it looks like a rainbow. 
Okay, so we're going to go like that. So it's an up down, upside down rainbow. Rainbow. No, it's upside. <laughs> just it's a curve. This is yeah. a curve. So I just practice how to make a curve. And again, you try to make sure you have enough paint on your brush and that and then just make a curve. So if you want to practice about five of those and then we'll come back and then you can see the next one that we're going to be doing with those curve strokes. So now we're going to connect the curves mm -hmm. and that's so we're going to put these together so you can go like that and curve like that. Just keep them connected. Oops, I'm going to need some more paint. Now you're going to be using that connection when you're doing the cinch that goes underneath the dollar horse and also when you're using um, harness. the harness. So that's why we want you to get used to connecting some of them. So you just keep your brush kind of flowing together. You connect your curve lines together. And that helps you know where you're gonna go with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next time we're going to do our curve, like a smiley face, smiley face or smile. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna practice the curve again upside down now. This is gonna go this way. See if you can do it that way. Practice that way. Goes up like that. Okay. And then if you wanna practice a few of those because you're going a different direction and then your teacher will give you some time to practice that and then we'll, once you're feeling comfortable with that, you can connect those just like you did your curves, like the rainbow ones. Karen is showing you how she can curve those together because that is going to be showing, again, like on the cinch and on the harness. Here you've got your smiles and you have your rainbows. Oh, we'll get on there. So that works. Right here. Put it up there, like that. Okay. Okay, so the next uh, stroke we're gonna teach you is called the S curve and that, and so it's more like a S shape um, or a snake. We could call it a snake and that. So we gotta think about how that curve is. You gotta think about a curve going this way and then this way how a snake would go or how an S shape would go. So we're just going one way then this way. It's just a really easy curve. S curve is what we do. Let's try just because I did that I'm going to try to go backwards and that's so the other opposite direction See if you can handle that. That's always a challenge to do the opposite way. That's kind of fun. That's kind of the S curve. So those are some that you can practice on your paper. And then when you feel comfortable with that, you can even start doing some that are tighter. Do you want to show some that are a little bit tighter Smaller. together? And then you can elongate some and show where that's going to be. Okay, because yeah, we're talking about more up in this uh, area on the main where the hair is and that. So we're thinking about how that is going to go kind of look like hair, I guess you want to say. And that. so that's where we're kind of concentrating. Uh, the S curve and that. But as you can see, this is almost an S curve too, going up and down, up and down. So that's another place where the S curve is and that in this red. And I think zone. you also use the S curve a little bit on the reins too. Oh, the reins, yep. There's, yeah, there's a big one. That's a nice long one. So yeah. do you want to do a couple tight ones and maybe yeah. a couple long ones where they can look at it and then they can try that? Oh, I'm backwards. Some tight ones. It's okay to go back if you can't get all the way around with that your paint uh, to kind of go back and touch up a spot. 
but just don't just, push. Yeah, don't push your brush that way. You just want to keep, you can put, get a little more paint on your brush so it, it comes together. I'm going to try a couple long ones. You could do a really long like one. A, like, a, like the reins. Oh, okay, sideways, we'll do that. Okay, let's try that. So if the reins here is, is a, like a nice big long S curve. So we're gonna start there. So this is gonna be more of a sideways one, like that. So you can try doing your S's in all kinds of directions. Yeah. Or make them really tight. And that would be like in here. Yep. Like that little, little marks, yeah, the little white marks there. So if you just want to do a little up and down, up and down, kind of like a little caterpillar. That's kind of fun. Okay, have fun practicing on your S-curves. Okay, so our next stroke is going to be called the teardrop stroke, which is more where it let the petals are. And that's, so here's our flower, where the petals are put together We'll put a flower on this on the saddle and that's where we kind of like to see where the flowers are um, with what we call the teardrop so it's um, this is a little bit harder to do so we're gonna try um, the way I do it <laughs> so I kind of just nicely touch my little bit on the paper and then I push down Okay. Communicate from okay. side. Oh, yeah, that's true. okay, so I just touch the paper a little bit and then I push down on my brush a little bit so it's coming towards me though. And then you can go back and do another brush stroke this way and fill it in. And fill it in. So it looks like a teardrop. It's got a point at one end and then it's thicker on the end of your petal or the tear. So you can go around like that and then fill it in. So that's kind of fun. Okay, so if you want to do, to, we're gonna connect these teardrops, when you show the petal, petal stroke together. We're gonna put these petals like that, that will make the flower and that. So um, we're gonna put them together. So I'm gonna start with one this way. I'm gonna turn my paper. And I'm gonna turn my paper or your horse on, the, on where the saddle's at and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put one right there and one right there. And then I turn my paper. I'm gonna do this one like this. Oops, I lost that one. And turn my paper. So turn your little horse around so you can kind of get at them. And there's, there's a petal, a flower petal. And kind of keep some area in between is kind of nice. So we're, because we're going to do something special in the middle of these mm -hmm. petal strokes. Oops. And that, so um, that's a kind of fun thing to do. So I'll make a little, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. In the back of your horse, if you don't have much room, mm -hmm. you don't have much room to put these little petals on. And that, so. And again, you're just barely touching the paper and then you push down a little bit as you go around the curve on the end of the, make it thicker on the bottom. I'm gonna turn my paper and put it down again. So that makes a nice little petal. Those are kind of pretty. Mm -hmm. And that will be the saddle on your horse. That'll be your back saddle, yeah. So as you can tell on the back of a horse, that's that very, very important. The tail is nope. different. The tail's different. So, and okay. there's places you could put, but the, we're gonna concentrate the flower on the back of the saddle, is what we're thinking, okay. okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do a really fun one. I hope we, most of the kids really like this part of it, and that and we call this dot, um, making little dots and big dots or whatever, um, and we can use the, um, again, the, the little uh, brush. Again, we don't want you to be pushing down on the brush too hard, so just enough paint on there to make a, a nice dot. So you're gonna be, I'm gonna do it over here first. We're just, can you see that? Maybe yellow's not a good color. We're just gonna push down a little bit on the on the brush, just a little bit, so just a little, I'm gonna, think I'm gonna try a different color. 
Yep, okay. It's, it's yellow, as I think it's too light. Okay, I'll go back to the red. Okay, so just a little dot. We're just pushing down a little bit. So you make a little dot, a little dot, a little dot, okay? Very easy. Uh, just want little dots in that. But um, Okay, so the other thing, the other thing I wanna show you with the paintbrush, because there's another way to make dots, and that's using the back side of your, of the hard part of the handle in that. Again, you have to make sure you wash, wash your brush out. We don't want paint on you. And so we're gonna use the hard part of the, of the handle. We're gonna just dip it into the paint like that, and then just touch the paper again. And it makes a really neat little dot. We like these kind of dots. So just fun little dots, and you can make a bunch of them and that and spread them out. And that's kind of cool. But it's easier with uh, the, back of the, the back of the brush handle and that, so. So either way, it's a good, okay. So now we're going to use our dots. Um, okay, the next thing that we'll do with the dots is after you've got your petals for your flowers, then you're gonna use either the back end of your paintbrush or the bristles, and then you can put some dots in the middle of the flowers that you were practicing on. So you have just some little tiny dots in there. You can use a different color than what you did on your flower petals. And sometimes on the horses, they would use the little dots to kind of outline the petals. And it really adds a different dimension to your painting. When you look at the Dala horses, it looks like it's very complicated and very hard. But if you use just these simple strokes the simple dots, it can be, you can make your painting beautiful and looks very complicated. And notice that she was using a different color for her dots, but she washed out her paintbrush first. You don't want to put the dots on top of each other. We don't want you to mix the colors. We want you to keep them as um, true nature colors. And so you can just use those dots. I'll use the other side, sorry, wait. Okay, so I'm gonna use the back side of my, again, I'm washing out my bristles. I don't want to get paint on us. And that's, so I washed out my bristles. Now I'm gonna try using the back of my brush handle over on this one. It really changes the appearance of your flower when you add those dots. Oh, my phone. And no. you can put different colors on your flower. Stop. Stop. We're gonna go, oops, this brush. Ah, this brush. Okay, so we're gonna just, um, now we're gonna just kind of put all these strokes together and that so you can kind of get an idea of the um, petals and the um, curves and, the, and that we can do. So I'm gonna just show you on the, let's do like the curve here between this petal and just go around like that Kind of like a little outline. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So this is a curve going one way, and then your curve going the other way, connecting. It makes your flower look really pretty. Getting together, curve that way. There's another curve. Very simple strokes, but it really enhances it. Yep. So that works good then. Really changes so. the looks of it. And then, let's see, we'll start. I'm gonna do just um, with, uh, let's see, we'll do the green here. Um, and just the little lines out. Um, sometimes I'll do a little line out like the, on this. And that's kind of almost, you could do a teardrop, kind of elongated teardrop, like that. Kind of looks like a leaf, actually. Now when you do this. That's kind of fun. And then, fun to put all those new strokes together. Yep. Now we're just gonna do a few little dots. That would be great. So, <clears throat> let's see, I'll put them in, I'll put them on the flower a little bit. 
about like that. When you're going to put a, a color on top of a color, make sure that your base color is dry before you try to add an accent color because we don't want them to blend together. We want to keep those colors true. That's a good point. There, kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So those dots really add. That dots really add. Okay. strokes together on the horse. And I think the first part we'd like to now with the wood because it's a different texture than your paper. Yeah, so you got to have a little more paint on the brush. A little more and patience. A little more patience, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to say you can also mix your colors. Um, so I'm going to do blue from Leno. Well, let's see what's here. I think it depends on how much it's sanded, how smooth yeah, it is. Yeah, that's true. When she says that she's going to blend her colors, that yeah. doesn't mean she's going to put the two colors together to make a new color. She's going so to petals. do two different colors of petals, but be sure you wash your wash brush. brush. Okay, now I'm going to try, I'm going to do a, um, now they're the green. So now I'm going to do a blue and now I'm going to do a green petal. Right, so, so nice that you can turn your horse though so that you can really have it right in front of you. You can always go back there and fill in the colors in the middle of your petals. So you see you're squishing out all the water so that your green or whatever color you're using is a nice true color and it's not watery when you put it onto your horse. Okay, I'm going to let that sit there, let it dry a little bit because I want to add some dots in the middle of that, but let's, so we're going to wait on that. So the next thing I want to try to do is we're going to try to do that um, main. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do that um, S curve in that. So here's the main. This is where the hair of the horse is in that. So let's see if we can do an S curve. Just kind of keep going down like that. You can kind of spread this out because we could, you could change colors on this one too. And you can so, put dots in between those also. Yeah, so don't get them too close together. And then you can put some shorter ones over on the side. Oops. This is running and that mane is blowing back. Okay, and then make sure you go to the other side. Always hang on to your horse tight too because you're going to kind of put it at an angle like this would be nice to hold on to. You don't have to lay it down because the, now you've got wet paint on that side. So hang on to the horse, all the legs there. Notice how she's using her little pinky finger to have a little bit of balance too. Helps to steady your paintbrush. So there we got that. So I'm going to try putting, let's see what color we should put in there. I'm going to put a yellow. In the middle here, we're going to put the yellow. When you're working on your horses, you're going to have more time than what we are when we're videotaping. So you'll be able to let things dry a little bit before you try to put colors in between. So they don't blend together. Right? Yep. Okay. Putting in there. Okay. Okay, the curve the curve now. Let's okay, so now we're gonna try to um, do some of those curves a little um, up and down one way. Uh, the 
that rainbow. Not sorry, that. We got, we're gonna do this part right here like that, where the green is here. And then I'm gonna go back and do this part so it kind of comes together like that. Oh, we also, I see the, for the saddle, we could do that curve around, the, around this edge here. So we're gonna try that. I like the blanket under the saddle. Okay, let's, let's do the blanket here. So this is a curve. Do another curve. And then we're connecting our curve. Oops. If you want to have one in the kind of comes around the back of here. Oh boy, this is. And go over those curves a couple of times to make it a little bit darker color if it got a little bit too thin or a little bit too watery. And just remember not to lay your horse down because the other side is wet. Okay, so now I'm going to do the, the harness here that goes around this way. So we're going to go start with this. All right, keep moving your horse around. That's the most important. And move it around again. Make sure you hang on to those legs. I got some serious stability here to hang on. And I'm going to try to connect my curve that way. Okay. Now, we go out this way. It's a little harder. Now I'm going to go back. <laughs> Okay, okay. We're gonna go this way. Okay, now we're gonna do the rainbow curve. The rainbow curve up and down here. I'm gonna connect to those other spots. So it's all connecting. Oh boy. Remember, so. take your time on these. It's not like, Karen's done this for a long time. She's our professional. Oh, <laughs> you can take your time when you're doing your curve strokes. This is new for you. Now she's doing some curve strokes to, on the cinch of the saddle, that's to keep the saddle on the horse. Okay, I'm gonna turn it around. I'm not gonna do underneath. It's... Would you want them to connect that later after that dries? Like it dries, yeah. Because it's then the cinch does go underneath the horse. And so you can do that after this has dried. You can still use your curve strokes to go under the horse's tummy to connect it. Keep that cinch on. Okay, let's try to do We're going to see if I can get this in between. Now, this would be more your like S curve and that. We're going to try that in the in the middle there. And see if that they can do just dots in there too. They couldn't could, they? Yeah, they could just do dots in there that too. That might be a little bit easier. Okay, I'll for do them. one on one on each side. Okay. Why don't we do that? Okay. So we'll do I'll do the S curves in between here. If you're feeling really comfortable with those, you can try an S curve. Oops. And maybe you wouldn't be doing all of these. Um, at the same day. Otherwise, you can just put dots in between or make some Oops. kind of a. Um, I'm going to put. So that works. If, you're, if your curve strokes are a little bit too tight together and you're not able to put this S stroke in between, you can take your um, paintbrush and just put some dots in the middle or you can put dots all the way across. Those dots will add a lot of interest to it. So turn it around, make sure you're hanging onto that horse. Don't let it fall down. There, so 
It's looking kind of fun. Okay, I'm going to try the dots and we'll go back that way. So, let's try some, some dots all the way around now. Kind of give that a special look. Well, first of all, now this is kind of dry, so this is good timing to do just special. Like, remember a flower has, this is kind of like pollen in the middle of a flower. And again, you can kind of go up. Put your lot dots in a row. Oops. Hold on. And we never make a mistake. We just add it and adjust to it. Let's put some dots on the side in between our curve marks. That's yeah, so. Bigger, mark, bigger dots too on the, that's kind of fun. On the blanket? The blanket. You can do, well, let's, um, I'll do bigger. And another thing we say is less is best. You don't want to cover your horse with dots. You don't want to cover them with a certain amount of curve strokes. It starts to get um, too cluttered or too close together, and that makes it sometimes look a little messy. And so we always say less is best. Have fun with it, wherever you feel like a dot should be. It's a good place to put dots. And you're only using these um, other extra colors to put the decoration on. You want to leave your horse the background orange. You don't want to um, change it by coloring the legs or coloring another part of the horse. A complete different color. The doll horses are made to be a, a orange background or this one is a silver background. Um, some of them, some of the horses have a black background, but the colors that you're putting on are just for the decoration, not to change it to a completely different um, color. Yep. Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna stop a little bit. Okay, so next we're gonna go to the white and learn about where the bridle is on the horse. And as you see, especially around the nose, you gotta go around the nose here. It goes all the way around. And that, and then we have a line that goes up this way. And then our big S curve is this one. This is the reins. This would be coming back this way. And these are kind of really fancy ones, so you don't have to think about that so much. It's more about thinking about the bridle. You know, we're gonna go all the way around the mouth of the horse. This is going up towards the ear. And then the, the big reins is gonna go this way back to where, um, back to the back of the neck. So first I'm gonna start with uh, around the nose and that. We go ahead a little bit. So we're gonna go this way and we'll go across here. the nose, turn the horse around again. You can go underneath here, but I don't, I think it's kind of hard. It's really mm -hmm. hard to get your brush under there. So I'm just gonna go this, just around like it that. Show. Yeah, so we got, okay, so we did around the horse, around the nose. Now I'm gonna go from this, from back behind the ear, all the way down to his nose down there. So we're gonna just come down that way. Go that far and that, and then gotta turn it around. We're gonna go to the other side. Again, we're coming behind the ear. And it goes down to the mouth. Okay, so next, we're gonna try that big long S curve that starts right here, right where you're connected. 
and then back to the neck, back of the neck of the horse. So it's gonna go this way, come around this way, and then back up to the neck there. Yeah. Okay. And the rider has something to hold on to. Yeah, we gotta have a reins to hang on to the horse. Okay, so here we go. This start at the where the mouth is where those two connected. And then we come back to the back, back to the rider. Big reins. This is where the reins is. So it's kind of an S curve. You think of that way. So there we go. And then I like to do a little fancy work. You know, these are called. This is kind of holding the the reins on there. If you want to do that, it's just a little. There's actually probably a little teardrop, but just a little line like that. Kind of connects the the reins in that. So that's kind of fun. Okay, so now we've got the, the horses. Okay, we're gonna do right now. Okay, so now we're, as long as we've got the white paint, we're gonna do, this is kind of in the front of the mane and that, between the- Between in, the ears. Between the ears, there we go. Between the ears. So we got a little, it's supposed to be a little teardrop here, but whatever you can do, just to kind of get a little lines here for the, for that's the, at the front of the horse. Yeah, that's hard and rough. Okay, and then in the back of the horse, he's got to have to have a tail. So we're going to put the tail in there too. This is kind of a big, big tear drop. Again, you just kind of push it down and push it down. And if you want to have it kind of look like hair hanging, you can go this way. Make it look like a, like a horse's tail. That's kind of fun. Okay. And then do you want to talk about the eyes? Yes, okay, so the very, very last thing we're gonna do is the eyes. And usually, we, we don't usually put the black out there for you because we this is just a little bit of black. And the eyes are just little lines right here on the sides of the horse, but um, yours is, that's a round one. So we're gonna just put the eyes right in there. Um, and it's pretty skinny, so I think on on here they have a it's a really skinny brush, and they do three little lines. But if you can only just do one, or even just two little lines, that's that's more that's than good. enough. Less is always best, so it doesn't get cluttered. Yeah, yeah, two. I guess we'll do two little here. So there we go. Awesome. Right. Yay. So you only need black for the eyes. Yep. There we are. And there you have your doll horse. Kind of fun. And everybody's will turn out a little bit different, but it's all unique for the painter. So have lots of fun. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy.